everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikita and on this channel we chat about diversity and inclusion of BIPOC stories in literature as well as in real life. So you can expect a lot of book chats, book recommendations, as well as my podcast called Brown People Problems. So for today's video, I wanted to share with you five books, five South Asian reads that I think are quite universally likable and that I think most of you, if not everyone, should find some sort of value and interest in them. As always, we try to really diversify our reading and just making sure that we are being inclusive, especially with our bookish habits and tastes. All right, up first, I have a literary fiction recommendation, and this is At Least You Have Your Health by Maddie Sinha. Maddie Sinha is a practicing physician in the United States. I believe she's in New York. Um, she's a gynecologist, if I'm not wrong, and this was her second novel. I've also read her first one, which is called White Coat Diaries, which is also great. Um, but this one in particular has to be my favorite of the two. At Least You Have Your Health follows the story of Dr. Maya Rao, who is a gynecologist in California, and essentially something happens in her workspace, um, which forces her to walk away from her job, and she finds herself getting involved in a wellness clinic for women. So she starts working for this wellness clinic. It's a boutique sort of a wellness service that services the wealthy female clientele in the state that she's living. And so it's a really interesting kind of journey and a process of someone who is very kind of medically grounded and what it looks like for her to leave a more clinical setting and go into, um, a boutique service where she's really being asked to step outside of her um, comfort zone with medicine. So she is uh, having to think about alternative medicine and um, it was really interesting reading like her responses to it. There's a lot of interesting like character development, character growth. There's a bit of a mystery element in here as well because Dr. Rao finds herself feeling this sort of um, uh, a kinship and, and admiration for her boss at the boutique clinic, the woman who hired her, and there's a lot of mystery and intrigue surrounding her. But it's, it was really interesting. It was this like mix of the culture of these like boutique clinics uh, that offer like healing crystals and all of these sorts of other alternative therapies that maybe traditional medicine doesn't believe in. So it's interesting watching her navigate that. And she's such a lovable character. Uh, Maya is, I believe she's a mother of three kids. So she's not a single mom, she has a partner, but it was interesting watching her navigate like her own insecurities and her own development into who she kind of didn't think she would be. So this was really great, really lovable characters, really interesting. It just, it had me captivated the whole time. And the mystery element was also fun. All right, up next I have a thriller mystery, a full thriller mystery recommendation. So the last one we had more of an Indo-American focus of character and story. And for the mystery recommendation, I have The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujata Massey. You've probably heard me talk a lot about this and you're probably a little bit sick of this, but I absolutely love this book. This is a series and I believe the fourth one is coming out this July um, and I will be picking it up. But if you like historical fiction and if you like um, mysteries and like thrillers, you would really like this. Um, if by some miracle you haven't heard me talk about this, uh, Widows of Malabar Hill follows our protagonist, a young woman in her 20s, Praveen Mystery, who's a lawyer in um, Mumbai and this is 1920s India so pre-independence India that was at the cusp of of more of a revolutionary sentiment um, and she is one of the first female lawyers in the country and definitely the only one in her city and she starts working with her father and his law practice and while her sex is very limiting for her because at that time it was not very admired for women to want to work outside the home. She finds herself just naturally handling cases uh, of, of some women. 
So in this particular series, she comes across um, these three widows um, who were married to the same man. So these three widows who have who seem to have signed away all of their uh, share in their ex in their late husband's wealth to charity. So she gets really curious and she starts exploring what's going on. And there's some mystery in here. There's some murder in here. There's some intrigue, and. I thought it was so well done. This series is so well done. My qualm with most series is that the first book is good and then the second is okay and then it just tapers off from there. But I hope I'm not speaking too soon, <laughs> but with this one, um, all the books are very, very promising. It's also quite historically accurate. I don't appreciate historical fiction that is say for example set in 1800s like the regency era but then you have characters behaving in a way that we know was not socially appropriate at that time and just wouldn't have happened like this wouldn't have happened but Sujata Masi does a really great job of being very historically accurate in the character's environment the the cultural narrative of that time as well as like in her storytelling and her character development and i really appreciate that about books it just makes the story feel a lot more authentic you know so if you like this definitely definitely check it out um i think this is one that we need to talk about more um Sujata Masi is an excellent author i haven't read anything else besides the series from her but i am planning on picking it up and i just love Praveen she's an amazing protagonist very imperfect um very imperfect and also very very relatable all right the next recommendation i have is for um truly like historical fiction and this one is uh historical fiction and it's a lit fic um so you it satisfies both care uh, both categories for this category i have the henna artist by alka joshi uh, again, this is really popular. I believe Alka Joshi sold the rights to Netflix for a movie that's going to be coming out perhaps this year. I'm not sure, but I read that she sold the rights to Netflix. So Henna Artist is great. It was on Reese Witherspoon's book club list. I'm sure a lot of you watching have heard of this. If you've heard of it and you haven't picked it up and you've been hesitant to, I would highly, highly encourage you to. The same thing happened with me. I did not pick it up till last year. I saw it everywhere. Nothing really like appealed to me. The name didn't appeal to me. The cover was mm, didn't really appeal to me. But what's in between the cover and the in the pages here is incredible. So this is book one of three. The third one just came out, which I finished. <laughs> um, but this is a great series. The third book, which was The Perfumist of Paris, was all right in my opinion. Hen Artist remains like the best one in the series in my opinion. But this story follows uh, Lakshmi, who is a 17 year old in 1950s India, um, in the state of Rajasthan, in the city of Jaipur, which is like this like city of royals. And this is where I said it's historical fiction because it does take place in that time and then as the series goes on, you get to see other characters grow up through uh, other decades. So it spans about three decades. But in the first book, I think we're just in the 50s. This is just post-independence India, and it's about Lakshmi, who's 17-year-old protagonist. She runs away from an abusive marriage, finds herself in a city all alone. She's been ditched by her whole family. She's seen as bad luck. Um, but she gets to Jaipur and she starts to make a name and a business for herself as a henna artist for the royal and the upper class ladies of the city. So it's really interesting. There's a lot of interesting rich people drama. If you like that type of um, trope and that type of subplot, you would enjoy it. Um, but what really drew me to this book and what has me loving this character over and over and over again is just what a resilient protagonist Lakshmi is. She literally starts off at 17 with nothing. She has many different uh, times in her life where she risks to lose everything and she does sometimes but she still kind of picks up and goes on and I thought that was like incredible. Um, the characters are really lovable. Um, you've got again it's very historically 
accurate, it's very culturally appropriate, and it's been really interesting. I think what's really interesting is the author, Alka Joshi, this is the first book and I, she published it in her 60s, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. And she has found such fame, justifiably so, with this book. I think that just kind of goes to show that when you think you're you're nearing like retirement and you know you're done trying new things in your life, then even then there's so much scope and opportunity that is out there for people, especially for women, because we're so used to thinking that okay, life ends at like 30, 35, 40, you know, I've done what I needed to do, I've accomplished what I needed to do, and we became be become complacent after that. But the author's own, I think, story is so inspiring. So this book has some, uh, there's a bit of romance, there's a lot of drama, you've got really great cultural commentary, amazing commentary on class, privilege, and just really great narrative on what it's like to be really like a woman who's trying to make her own name in the world. Obviously there's a lot of vast differences in uh, luxuries experiences in the 50s versus maybe what a lot of women of color might experience today, but there's also a lot of similarities in what women of color experience today. So it's very, very relatable if you are a woman of color and if you're not and you would like a bit of insight, this is great. I have another historical fiction recommendation that I think everybody would love and that is Independence by Chitra Banerjee Divakarani. I don't know why I don't have a physical copy of this. I am going to be getting my hands on it very soon, but I read it the day it came out. I read it in two days and I love this author. Um, I've talked a lot about her, so I will link another video up here for you where I chat more about her, but um, she's written some of like my favorite books and Independence by her was no different. Um, Independence is set uh, so again, now we, we're no longer in the Western part of the world. We go back to the South Asian subcontinent and it's set in Western part of India, or sorry, Eastern part of India, but it's called West Bengal. Um, and it's set in 1940s. So just around, during and after the independence time uh, for the country and for that subcontinent. Um, and it follows the story of three sisters uh, who are around the same age, I believe in their late teens and early 20s. And essentially, it's a coming of age story for these three sisters who are very different from one another. One is very academically driven, the other one is romantically driven, and the third one um, is not a very lovable one, I'll be honest, but I think as you kind of go on, you develop a lot of respect and compassion for her. Um, but it takes you through what these three sisters, what their life looks like, and then what happens when like independent, when they're at the cusp of independence, when revolution breaks out, how it alters their lives forever, and what their lives look like immediately after. So it does span a number of years, and it is just so fascinating. Um, if you aren't too familiar with like the independence history of that subcontinent, you know, the, the South Asian subcontinent, which includes like India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, was colonized by the British for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and did only get their independence in 1947. And which is, which is quite recent. Um, and it's, it was a really traumatic time, obviously, for this entire collective group of people. So the book definitely has a painful way of kind of like portraying the trauma that communities had to experience at that time, especially this community that they're part of and what, how it appended their lives and what it looked like. But this book is not all like sorrow and grief. It's actually a really incredible, resilient story of three young women um, making something of their lives uh, despite the circumstances. If you like female protagonists, if you like imperfect female protagonists, you would actually really love Independence and it's a great historical fiction, very nicely done. All right, and my very last South Asian recommendation um, is in the category of fantasy. And to be honest, I haven't read any other South Asian fantasy stories. I don't think none that I can remember right now. So this wins by default, but it is very worthy of this title. And that is Keki by Vaishnavi Patel. You 
probably seen this book making its rounds. It is really, really quite famous. I've talked a lot about it here as well. And it actually does live up to the hype. Um, if you're not familiar with this book, this is essentially a mythological retelling, a Hindu mythological retelling. Um, and it's essentially about this character named Keke, who is considered this like mythological, evil stepmom villain sort of a character in Hindu mythology, um, especially in like in Ramayana, which is like this like religious, um, which is this religious story of of gods if you are south asian or if you are if you identify as hindu or if like you're, you're like a brown person you you probably have heard stories of how she was like this really evil stepmom and how she like influenced a war and drama and politics and so Veshtami patel has written um, her story. So it's a feminist retelling. So if we imagine what KK would have written for herself, this is one of the imaginings of it. If you like anything by Madeline Miller, if you like Circe by Madeline Miller, you would really like this as well because it has a similar narrative of a woman being villainized and wronged um, when really there's a lot more complexity to that. I really enjoyed reading this book. It wasn't perfect for me. There were some things that felt, some parts that felt a little bit rushed or other parts that I felt were a little bit dragged out, but um, it was still really, really well done. It was really interesting. I believe this author's first book, which is an incredible feat. And, she, and she's done a really great job of taking this like a villain from Hindu mythology and um, adding more layers to her. And you, so you get the story from when she's born, to very much later on in her life. So it spans like decades. And there's a bit of a fantasy element in here as well. Um, because it's a mythological retelling, I wanted to place it in the fantasy category, but there is a small fantasy element, a bit of magical realism, if you will, in here, um, which I don't know if that's accurate to the texts, but um, it added a nice touch. So if you haven't checked this out, I would pick it up um this is actually it was a lot of fun to read it was great it was very captivating it's very very fast moving so you don't have a single time when you feel bored honestly i didn't and other people that i've spoken to who read this flew through this book it was very fast read don't be um alarmed by how big it is because it's great all right everyone those were my five recommendations for the south asian stories that i think everyone will love that are for everyone to enjoy and i hope that you pick one of these up if you have read them or if you do plan on reading them let me know which one you picked down below again hope you are diversifying your reading to include more bipoc stories and authors and i'll see you next time mm -hmm.